Hello again, my name is Marcelo. Today I'm going to be doing project holder problem number 12. This one is where it starts to get interesting. So it talks about triangle numbers, which are generated by adding the natural numbers. And uh, it lists a bunch of them, how they're generated. So basically if you add 1, you get 1, and then 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, all the way to 28, and then it lists the divisors of all the first seven triangle numbers and then it asks what is the value of the first triangle number to have over 500 divisors. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to be using Python but again you can use whatever programming language you want and if you don't know a triangle number uh, it basically is just adding numbers up and which means you can calculate them by uh, the sum of uh, natural numbers which uh, uses the formula of a sum equals n times n plus 1 and divide that all by 2. Uh, but since we are, we, these are useful information that we can reutilize in others, so let's just uh, reopen our utils file and I'm going to be creating here a class called numbers and the idea is you have a bunch of uh, utilities that generate these numbers for us. So a triangle of n should return us n times n plus 1 and divide this whole thing by 2. So and we also need a method to calculate the number of divisors here. So for n we are going to return right now it's an integer so it starts at 0. So from here, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, what you want to do is uh, just do kind of a sequence while our number of divisors is less than 500. Uh, let's start with 500 if the number of divisors equals 2 because any prime number has at 2 divisors, so Rd is going to be at least 2. And you can start if n equals 1. And what we do is just uh, each loop we calculate, we increase n by 1, we calculate the triangle number, which should be triangle numbers dot triangle of n, and then we calculate the divisors by calling numbers dot number of number of divisors of n as well. And once we have implemented all of these, so now we can just print the number finally here. And uh, actually, this should be calculating the number of divisors of the triangle number. And uh, so now all we have to do is implement the number of divisors function. Uh, yeah, before that, let's of course uh, from the UDIS file import the numbers class. And now to import the number of divisors function. Uh, so number of divisors you can start with it's at least two and you can actually return to this number here. And then what we do is we can go for our, uh, in a range of zero to, in this case you can use the maximum of the square root of n here because we know that if there's a divisor that is below the square root, bigger than the square root, then we have a divisor that is smaller than the square root. So whenever we find either one of these, uh, oh, there must be some thing missing here. And it's missing an extra parenthesis. And uh, so whenever we find one, so if n is divisible by our current number, then we just increase the number of divisors by two. So we're just missing a couple of fixes here. So first we want to start the range from one so that you not divide by zero. We need to make this uh, integer division and then we also need to change this to not be the number of divisors but the triangle number itself. And I think this should be enough. Uh, if you run this it should get us the result, but it's uh, quite slow. And it's slow really because this function here is going to be quite slow. So we're going to be calculating a lot of these uh, divisors here. And this is really slow. So how can we improve this? We know that uh, any number of divisors, uh, any number, uh, its divisors can be calculated by 
the formula of a prime number times uh, elevated to a an exponent and then times that the next prime number elevated to its own exponent and times all the way up to the last prime number elevated to the exponent so we just need to do that and uh, to kind of simulate this and the number of divisors of n should be something like uh, the exponent plus uh, every single exponent plus one times the next exponent plus one uh, once again all the way to the last exponent plus one so to do this we just need to generate a list of primes here and then uh, any prime that could of course divide be a divisor of n and just kind of uh, get the exponents on the cone. so we do something like primes up to and then we could do here the setting of the square root of n and let's just delete this formula so now that we have a list of primes uh, we can just go through that instead and the idea here is let's call it primes and then for each prime in the list of primes uh, we do the same so we check if it's a if one is divisible and then we have to get the number of exponents that equal to that number and from here if uh, the number n is divisible by our prime so we just create a copy of n here and while that copy is divisible by this number then uh, we can just uh, continue to divide it by so just uh, divide it by p every time and we can initialize in, um, an exponent which starts at 1 and it increases uh, for each round as this runs and then if we start here with a number of divisors of 2 instead of uh, adding up we're just going to multiply by the value of the exponent and if we run here uh, I believe it's still quite slow uh, the reason for this is because even though this is a much better algorithm uh, we'll keep generating the list of primes and an optimization that we can do here is just that we can start with a primes that has a default value of none and then if it's not here then we can kind of do this um, so the idea is that here on our algorithm we can instead import our primes and just make a list of primes here that should be uh, very large so something like up to 65,000 so that it has uh, we believe that the divisors here shouldn't be bigger than 32 bits anyway and then on the number of divisors you can just pass on the primes and let's see if this works uh, oh yeah of course we need to fix here uh, this should uh, be outside of our while loop and then uh, this is still kind of slow uh, the reason here is we need to actually check for the square root of n not n itself so let's kill it here and I think this is all for now see a little bit faster and there are better ways to do this but for now I'm satisfied with the solution if you like this video please uh, like subscribe comment if you want to see anything else in this channel but for now that's all and thanks for watching